Fernando Munoz with Wireless LAN Professionals. I know six gig is like one of those topics. Um, ooh, doesn't seem to be working. Here we go. Um, Wi-Fi is pretty much everywhere. It was uh, fascinating to see Edgar Figueroa from the Wi-Fi Alliance a couple weeks ago talking about you know, how NASA is uh, using Wi-Fi in the space station and the astronaut out there is communicating back to the station and inside Air, uh, aircraft carriers. I mean, fascinating places. Uh, we see Wi-Fi everywhere, including nuclear plants. We've uh, had the chance to work on some of these places, and yeah, there is Wi-Fi uh, everywhere. You decide who Bart and the other guy is. But then there's also the places that are not so sophisticated and so advanced. And yes, Wi-Fi is here also uh, reducing, making that divide, uh, you know, be more affordable. And then we have 2.4, yes, no secret. We have it everywhere in the world, but then 2.4 is congested, is crowded, too many technologies use it. And then uh, we, this is kind of like a burning hell, but it thanks to you know, 5 gig, we have more channels. Yes, we had Uni 1 and Uni 3, and then we got the uh, permissions to use the uh, DFS channels, and yes, we benefit from that, but those channels are not ours. Um, but with that, it started getting crowded as well, you know, because after the time, it's just a lot going on. And then it got difficult to be in 5 gig as well. But no worries, salvation is on the way. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. Okay. Supposed to. That's what happens when you work on your presentation right before it is. Okay, let's try again. So Salvation is 6 gig, and we were so excited. We are so excited. I'm just thrilled that we have so many more channels. Yes, in the US, we got all 1.2 gigs of spectrum available. And I got one guy to play with. And yes, the spectrum is like so unused. So we're underutilized. But of course, here we have you know open Wi-Fi. We have more 6 gig. Yeah, it's still not used at all. Very little usage. And then, yes, not only uh, companies are racing to get their, their 6 gig out there, it is also the tool companies. They're all racing, and then we show off the tools, and we can do 6 gig, and it's all great. But uh, why are we racing? Well, because the world is pushing more license. They've seen the benefits of Wi-Fi. Trillion dollars here and billions of devices being deployed there and IoT writing on it and the industries and medical uh, institutions, everybody's benefiting from Wi-Fi. Education, everything is great. Organizations are advocating for having this uh, six gig spectrum available. It's not available everywhere. Just recently, the Dominican Republic got the whole 1.2 gigs uh, uh, available. We have, you know, Europe just lower band. But <clears throat> by advocating, what I mean is there is a Vowey man begging for have these frequencies available. But if everybody on the planet knows that Wi-Fi is great, it's been proven to work and benefit humanity, on everything, why do we have to beg for it? Why is it that they just don't give it to us? You wanna know why? Because those frequencies are not ours. Same as DFS, they belong to somebody else. And part of the problem is some companies already paid millions of dollars to have those licenses and they're using them and they are paying for it. And now we come and say, you know, like, can we use this for Wi-Fi, for unlicensed, for free? And one of the opponents, I mean, yes, we are here advocating for 6 gig, but one of the big institutions that was against it and is against it was AT&T. They said, look, we have over 8,000 links in 6 gig that are backhaul and telecom links that are used in our infrastructure, and we pay for it. So with these devices, it's going to be affecting the performance of the things we pay for. It's like if you're in your house, you rent your, your house, and then somebody else comes like, hey, can I use it while you're not home? Like, yes, yeah, kind of difficult because it's mine, we pay for it. So I see their argument. I see my argument because I'm on this side that we want it, right? 1.2, harmonize it worldwide, but it quite doesn't work that way. What's one of the concerns on their case? 
that these unlicensed Wi-Fi uh, devices may impair those links that they are using. Um, and yes, some of this came to a surprise as we were advocating and talking about six gig and how great it is for some of these nuclear power plants. Some of the guys are like, no, we don't like six gig. As soon as we get APs with six gig, the first thing we're gonna do is disable six gig. We don't like it, like, why? Like, we have lots and lots of point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point -point links to uh, power stations and substations that we communicate in rural areas and other places. And we have done tests, I don't know to uh, what extent, uh, but the SNR just went down like to 10 dB in places where they had presence of these guys. And yes, in 6 gig we have uh, low power indoors, but low power, those, po those um, uh, power levels are still pretty high. And you've seen how far AP's got two milliwatts. They can just cover large distances depending on, on where they are placed. And they said, you know, and people are gonna get affected by this. And yes, there are groups advocating for more spectrum. There are groups advocating for not releasing this. And one of the examples, like, because in Latin America, you know, we have Mexico that is still, you know, trying to get uh, all of the six gig um, available. But it's not, and uh, the International Telecommunications Unit created this International Mobile Telecommunications uh, System. Uh, it's a standard they created for the purpose of just like a creation or operation of these uh, mobile technologies. And uh, Lucas Gajito, which is the uh, director of GSMA for uh, Latin America, one of his arguments, you know, trying to tell the regulator, don't release six gig, you're gonna regret it once you make this available to everybody. There is no way back and you're not gonna be able to track down devices in six gig violating space and affecting these links and ultimately it is gonna be the people, first responders and all these backhaul links that are gonna be affected. And in his argument, he said, you know, Wi-Fi is not the internet, which we're always saying the opposite, huh? Like, no, Wi-Fi is the internet. People just have those mixed up. But his argument is that so that Wi-Fi works, it needs backhaul to get to the internet. And that's what these uh, links in six uh, gig uh, provide. He says, you know, mobile technologies are the internet. Wi-Fi just uses this to write on it. Yes, it's being approved. It's being debated here and there. AT&T didn't win the case. I mean, you have the AT&T and the FCC, you know, two giants going at each other with lawyers and stuff. Anyway, they didn't get the case. We still got uh, six gig available. And I'm not here to advocate for one or the other. Well, I do, I'm, you know, we're on this side. But just what I'm saying is when you are there deploying six gig, because it's gonna be here sooner or later. It's kind of here, but it will get more intense. So be kind, just know that yes, if we get six gig, thank you world, thank you universe for you know, letting us use these frequencies and benefit from it. But that doesn't mean that we can you know, blast power. I mean, you're gonna have limits, but we know those limits can still affect. So be kind out there and be conscious that those frequencies are not ours. So we gotta plan well, train yourself about your regulatory domains. Just because it's available doesn't mean you can do whatever, place and whatever. There are certain restrictions. So educate yourself and see how you can use this, help humanity, and be kind. Thank you.